new information this morning from the CDC involving how you should clean your surfaces to prevent the spread of the virus. Fogging buildings. To clean and disinfect. Use household cleaners. The CDC says alcohol solution. More potent chemicals that can diluted household bleach. It doesn't have to be this complicated. To disinfect properly, you have to understand a little bit of the science behind cleaning. It's easy to think this is complicated, but it's not, so let's simplify it. First, we have to understand that there is a big difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. Cleaning simply means removing debris, dust, and dirt from surfaces, but it doesn't necessarily kill harmful germs. Sanitizing reduces bacteria, provided the product you're using has the ability to do so. And disinfecting is the process of actually killing or destroying bacteria. So I think we can all agree that cleaning is the easy part, and for me it's the fun part. But when we need to disinfect a surface, how do we know we are actually doing so properly? Well, let's talk about two common disinfectants and their limits. First is bleach, specifically household chlorine bleach. There are a lot of brands available, but not all brands of bleach are created equal, so you have to read the label. For the purpose of disinfecting common household and commercial settings, you're looking for a product that contains 5 to 7% sodium hypochlorite, which is the disinfecting ingredient in bleach products. Then you'll see the other 93 to 95% is simply labeled as other ingredients. But where the science of disinfecting comes in is in the ratios used and in the dwell time. In other words, how much of the product do you use and how long do you let it sit on the surface? Some people might say to use one cup of bleach to one gallon of water, but we have to ask, what is the intended purpose of that ratio? And what dwell time is required with that ratio to effectively destroy the pathogens? Or in other words, disinfect that surface properly. When used correctly, bleach can kill mildew, some molds, flus like COVID, salmonella, and E. coli, just to name a few but it's all in the ratios and dwell time. And some surfaces will need to be wiped or scrubbed for the bleach to do its job. And a warning, never mix bleach with any other chemical. Protect your skin and clothes from contact and always wear a mask when using it. Next up are common disinfectant sprays like Lysol. With a spray product like this, there isn't any worrying about ratios per se, since it's a pre-mixed product. But you have to understand the dwell times. And did you know that Lysol even identifies these dwell times on the label itself? For instance, for mold, mildew, and common germs, the surface needs to stay wet for at least three minutes. But when you're trying to kill a virus, it needs to stay wet for at least 10 minutes. So many people probably think that a light mist of this product kills everything it touches. But depending on the level of disinfection required, more time will be needed. That doesn't mean it's a bad product, I use it all the time. It just means you need to know how to use it for it to work properly. And as with bleach, there are hazards, so be sure to read the warning labels. I teach much more about the science of cleaning in my online course linked below. But in summary, it's about knowing the difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. And with so many things in our lives needing to be cleaned or disinfected, you have to know what products to use for what jobs. And you have to understand the right ratio. And you have to understand the importance of dwell times. So whether you're disinfecting toilet sinks or kitchen cutting boards, knowing the simple science behind the process is the key to doing the job correctly and keeping your surfaces and spaces safe. The next question some might have is, what's the deal with green cleaning? Can you actually disinfect surfaces with green cleaning products? If that's a video you want me to make, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, happy cleaning. So when's the last time you guys got to play with some dried ice and food coloring? It's really fun.